So last night I was playing 25 and L on Ignition. I'm currently just starting a challenge, a personal challenge for myself over the next month to play 20,000 hands, a um, combination of a zone poker and regular six max. And I logged about, I would say, close to two to two and a half hours of play last night. And I got into some really interesting spots against a very aggressive opponent. And I want to cover those today in today's vlog. So this opponent, he was playing a very elusive style of play with his VPIP and PFR stats. And he was C betting 75% frequency on the river and 100% frequency on the flop in the turn. And whenever it was checked to him, regardless if it was heads up or multi ways, he would always fire out a bet regardless whether it was a thin value bet, a pure value bet, or just a pure bluff. And I want to show how I made some tweaks and some adjustments in my games to extract maximum value out of this opponent. But however, before we get to that, I've been on a bit of a healthy kick. I've been trying to eat a lot healthier to number one, lose weight, number two, lower my cholesterol, number three, also just be healthier overall. And I want to show you what I've been doing for breakfast. So let's go ahead. I'm going to head downstairs, make a healthy shake, and then we'll get to these hand histories. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so now that I've had my healthy breakfast, let's get to the fun part. Let's get to the hands. So I promised we were going to talk about some hands today in today's vlog against a very interesting opponent, an opponent that was fairly aggressive, fairly loose, and he would bluff whenever possible, and he would just see bet whenever possible, whether it be for thin value, for pure value, or as a pure bluff. Um, and now let's take a look at this opponent. So this is early on in the session, and the opponent that we're going to be looking at, he He's going to be in this position always. And this is about 24 hands in, um, you know, not, not that far into the session. We're looking at the opponent. If we take a look at his stats, his VPIP is 50, his PFR is 21. Um, his 3-bet stats is 0. He's not folding to any 3-bet stats yet. And we know that his C-betting 100% frequency on the flop. So in terms of my HUD stats, this is a flop C-bet, this is turn C-bet, this is river C-bet. And this is how often he's folding to C-bets. Um, and you'll notice that he's winning a fairly high frequency, 29% so far into the session. Um, but I didn't have that much stats on him. I didn't have that much detail on him at this point. All we know is that he looks to be fairly fishy. Um, at this point in time, he looks to be more loose passive than anything else and a bit of a calling station that's not full to three bets, but it's a small sample size. So we don't know too much about our opponent yet. However, by the time I get through this hand and I watch a few more, I start to get an idea of what he's doing as we go through the session. So let's go ahead and let's go through this hand. So pocket nines in middle position, standard open. You notice at this point in time, 20 um, hands in, I look like a complete nit. I'm not getting any hands. Um, pretty much card dead. That's probably why I haven't been paying too much attention to this opponent yet because I haven't been involved in that many hands, and I was four tabling at this time. Um, and at this time, I don't remember. I was either one table or two tabling zone along with um, – several other tables of regular six max so i was focusing um you know uh, my time everywhere on all the tables but once i started to get a picture about this guy that's when i started to adjust how i was playing back against him so i opened pocket nines he calls as expected and at this point in time i haven't tagged as more so loose passive than anything else the flop really isn't that great so he checks i check back the turn is a four at this point in time i don't know if he's checking back at king or 10 he leads out for 50 cents which is a fairly small amount i make the call 
and then the river is pretty much a, a non-consequential five doesn't really change that much and at this point in time he puts out a pretty big bet and I decide to find the conservative fold and lay this hand down to him um, so that's that hand let's go ahead and let's pull up another hand let me pull up another hand let's go a bit further into session one of the hands i wasn't involved in but let's take a look at how his stats are evolving as we go throughout the session so now we're about 69 hands into the session now take a look at his stats and let me go ahead and highlight this opponent again i'm not in this hand but notice how his stats are evolving when we go from 24 hands now to 69 hands um, he's still very loose. He's limping in a lot of hands. Um, he's calling a lot, but he's raising a lot too. He's raising 35%. His regression factor is really high. It's at six. His three bet percentage is at four. So maybe he has some three bet bluffs. It's a small sample size. We don't know yet. Um, he's still in 67%. And look at his C bet percentages. And let's go ahead and let's undo this so I can hover over this and we can look at the sample sizes. So he's C betting 12 out of 12 times on the flop. He is C betting five out of five times on the turn when he gets a chance to double barrel. And on the river, he is C betting three out of four times. So he is just a C bet maniac. So we know that he's full of crap. He's full of shit around 66% of the time because he's only going to make a pair around one third of the time. And then you'll notice here that he is actually, when he's facing aggression, he is folding to C-bets. So that's the other thing is that he's folding to C-bets, but when he's not facing aggression, he's just going crazy. And I think he's just trying to exploit people's over tendencies to fold. Um, let's take a look at what no caddy has. So he is, you know, it looks to be, you know, look at his three betting range, um, pocket queens and six, four suited. So he's polarized here. So he's three betting for value and he's three betting as a bluff. Um, and he's not folding to three bets. So far, it's only been a sample size of two, but O of two tells us that he's not folding to three bets. He wants to play a lot post-flop. So again, his, his stats are really starting to evolve, and they're starting to give us a picture. And let's go even a bit further um, to another hand that I'm not in, and let's take a look at his stats still evolving. Um, and let's pull this back up. And and this actually looks like this is um, early in the session. Uh, apologize for that. But um, this actually does give us a better picture. This is nine hands in. I thought that, that this would have been had my hands tracked in order. But for some reason, they're not tracking properly in order. Um, let me try to find one more. Let's see if we can go even further into the session and take a look at our opponent. Let's take a look at this one. Let's see if this one's further into the session. So this one is pretty close to where I wanted to be and still looking for a pretty good hand. Here we go. There we go. 75 set, 75 hands in the session now. His rebet stat is now up to 7%. Um, so it's even higher than it was before. It was at 4. Now he's up to 7%. Um, C bet is 13 out of 13 now so he had a chance to see bet again turn is now 6 out of 6 that's gone up as well um, and his VPIP and PFRs keep going up as well so again we have a very clear picture that this guy is fairly aggressive he likes to play a lot of pots he doesn't like to fold pre-flop and when given the chance he's going to see bet a lot so let's fold all these out and now let's get some hands let's get some hands that i had that i played against him um ones that i marked for review so the first one is going to be earlier on in the session and let me see if i can find this This is uh this hand is not that early on to the session, but it's I didn't start getting involved with him until really late into the session. Um, so now you look at my stats. There's still I mean I, I look like a bit of a, a loose passive knit here. I'm getting a lot of calling hands. I'm not getting that many raising hands. Um, and you'll notice that I really just not much really going on for me so far. So I'm starting to get a picture uh, about this opponent. Um, we get a limper under the gun. We get a min raise. This guy calls as well. And of course, with pocket threes on this type of table, we're going to call for implied odds. So I call, and the limper calls as well. We go to the flop. 
pretty good flop for us, right? Flop middle set on a fairly connected board texture where people are going to have tons of draws. People are going to have straight draws. They're going to have uh, combo draws with a pair with a straight draw. And so we're looking pretty good here. Um, plan here going four ways, especially looking at our opponents here, how aggressive they are. Um, C-bet stats on all of our opponents. The Razor here, C-betting high frequency. And remember, we know this guy, when he gets a chance, he's going to bet. So our plan is, of course, to check raise. Um, oddly enough, this opponent decides to check tells us that he's probably got a stronger range here. He's probably got over cards. This is ran, just some random broadways that doesn't connect this with, with this board, and he's not going to see bet into three opponents. And as expected, this opponent bets. Now, here's my mistake here. And actually, I don't know if it's that big of a mistake because we don't want to give a free card to either of these opponents if for some reason somebody has a naked ace, um, somebody has um, a six, Somebody has a deuce. We don't want to give him a chance to catch up. So I decide to um, three bet and I make it really big. Um, and I think that actually might make a mis might be a mistake against this opponent because he is folding um, when he's facing T-bet aggressions. And um, I don't know how he's folding to raise his post flop. But I think the size is really big. Um, seeing how this guy was a bit of a fish and how aggressive he was and seeing that he was betting into four opponents and, and how coordinated the sport would was I decided I would just pot it into him and hope that he would call and try to stack it off on the flop. But unfortunately, he folds. And so now I'm getting a bit of a more of a clear picture with this opponent that, oh, okay, well, maybe I should back off on my aggression, allow him to hang himself. Um, but this was a bit of a unique situation where we had other opponents in the hand. And we don't want to give them a free card. But I think my sizing was a tad bit too big. I think I probably should have made it just under three dollars and maybe he would have called i don't know um it's hard to say but so we see this here and now let's start changing up our tune and how we're playing and let's take a look at a couple more hands um let's actually take a look at a few more hands and so we're noticing that we have an aggressive opponent let's take a look at this hand so we have ace four uh, of clubs and the cutoff this opponent raises we know he's raising a wide range we know that he's c betting such a high frequency that if we hit our hand we're going to get paid off so of course we make the call in position to him and we're not too worried about the rest of the table there is this opponent in the small blind that looks to be fairly aggressive that could potentially three bet us um and this opponent however shows a three bet percent of uh, 10 percent. he looks to be a bit of of, um, tight and weak in this opponent here he's starting to normalize into uh, similar to this opponent but he hasn't three bet yet so we're not uh, too worried we're willing to take that risk um, we make the call and luckily we don't get squeezed out of the pot the flop is a good flop and you have a couple different options uh, remember what happened last time when we raised this opponent he ended up folding so this time I decide just to call a and plus, we have positional advantage on him. Um, our hand really isn't that strong where if we raise, we don't really don't want to look to get it in on the sport texture um, because we're not going to, even though we're close to a 50% equity edge, if we get it in on the flop, we're still a bit of a dog. And especially if our opponent re-raises us, then we could be dominated. Maybe they have ace-queen. Um, and so maybe our aces are dead and maybe only we have outs to a club draw. So for several different reasons, I decide to call. We also don't want to get blown off of off of our nut flush draw as well. Um, we call, this opponent calls as well, and the blind folds. Uh, we end up going to the turn. Now we pick up a pair plus a flush draw. Again, I decide just to call for the exact same reason. I want him just to barrel off um, any sort of chips that he has if he doesn't have any sort of a pair. And so I just call with a pair of aces on the turn. River is a bit of a blank. Yeah, he could have a pair of sevens that is in his range, but from what I've seen so far, it's a small portion of his range. Uh, he bets a dollar again, and of course we call getting seven and a half to one. Um, and let's show the hands. And he has ace five offsuit. And there we go. Um, this pretty much just shows what this guy is doing. Into multiple opponents, he bets the flop with, and let's actually go back to the beginning. Of, let's go back to the flop. In a four person pot, he leads out a very small and several opponents with literally no equity other than hoping for a miracle ace on the turn. Um, and at that point in time, he just continues to barrel multiple streets. And so we're getting a very clear picture of what we can expect from him. And so unfortunately, we don't make our flush. Unfortunately, he does have an ace and we chop the pot. Um, but that's, I think that's a fine result. So let's go to our next hand. 
And uh, let me actually take this off of here, show known cards. Hopefully you didn't see that. Um, but let's take a look at this hand. So again, he's raising a lot of hands. Um, yeah, we could three bet this very light as um, a thin, I'd say a thin value three bet or maybe even potentially a three bet bluff, but he's not folding to three bets. And so I just like calling him position, especially because he's just going to barrel off his chips. And so he bets the flop, of course. I think king high is good here a lot. So I call. Uh, the turn, same thing. I'm just going to continue to tall down. I think king high is good. We make a pair of jacks on the river. And uh, we have really good showdown value. Um, I think if we raise, he's probably going to fold all his worst. And he's probably going to continue with hands that beat us, such as a pair of queens and pair of threes if he is triple barreling. Um, since we have really good showdown value here, we do decide to just call. And he shows up with a pair of eights. And so he was betting a pair of eights. We ended up getting lucky in this hand. I mean, catching up. But I wasn't going to fold king high against somebody that's c-betting 100% frequency on the flop, 100% frequency on the turn. And now in the reverse, it's only 67%. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's only 67%. I mean, it's just absurd. So, um... I had made the plan just to check call all three streets and go to showdown with King High just because I know this guy's going to show up with nothing a high percentage of the time. So, one more hand. One more hand to review. And so let me go ahead and pull it up. And this is uh, the one that is actually, um, it's a tough pot for me. This is going to be a three bet pot. And this is going to be a tough situation. So we're 77 hands in at this point. I have pocket queens in the small blind he opens um he's not folding to three bets i made a small three bet i made a mistake here i think i made it i should have made it a little larger but i wanted to make sure that he stayed in the pot i wanted to make sure that he didn't fold um because i haven't three bet yet in the session you'll notice this is my first hand i've been pretty much card dead um so a three bet for me looks really strong especially when i've been check calling a lot of decent hands as well throughout the session so i wanted to make sure he called um, but I think my sizing is a bit too small here. I think I could have made it a little larger. Um, but with that said, I don't think it's a huge mistake against his opponent. I wanted to make sure he continued. Um, and he calls as expected, of course. We'll take a look at his three bet stats. Um, after this hand, I think it is um, 0 of 3. So um, up to this point, he hadn't folded to two different three bets. It's going to be the third one. And um, so we're going to go with our plan. Here's the plan is that we plan on checking this flop and check calling down 100% of the time. Why? Because when he faces aggression from a C-better, he's folding um, close to 50% of the time, and we don't want him to fold. But when we check, he is betting close to 100% of the time. Um, so while this may look like a scary board for people, when this opponent, and let's actually, um, let's let's take a look in of Equilab real quick. Let's minimize everything. And let's pull Equilab over. Now, when this guy is opening a wide range, and let's actually pull this hand back up real quick. So when he is raising in the cutoff position, let's take a look and cut off. He is raising 67% range in the cutoff, a 10 out of 15. And he's not folding to three bets. So let's just put 67% in. So this is what his range looks like in the cutoff. He's raising 67%. And it's just, I mean, it's just absurd. This guy's crazy. Um, and he's not folding. And let's put this in for Equilab. And let's put my hand in. So pocket queens. We'll just put queens in. And then we'll put the board texture on. Six of diamonds, ace of diamonds, and nine of clubs. And if we look at our equity against his, his entire continuing range, we're 67% equity favorite here versus somebody that is raising. Um, and his race for sin is actually even wider. Um, actually, so we sh actually should be looking at his RFI stats. So his RFI stats from the cutoff are actually 73% range. And so I actually didn't make this wide enough. So let's widen up his range a bit more and look at our equity. Now we're close to a 70% favorite. Um, so even though this may look like a scare card, it's not a scare card. I mean, we're just like crushing him. At this point in time, I decided um, I was going to take a check line exploitively to allow him to spew off chips. I check. He bets 225. We call. The turn's a jack. Again, we're still not scared in terms of, of his hand. 
And let's put a jack in here. We're hoping that he catches up a little bit. You notice it doesn't really change much at all. Um, we're 68.56% favorite. We check. He bets again. Of course, we call. Rivers is heaven. Yeah, the flush gives there, but who cares, right? Um, against a, just a maniac like this. We go down to the river. We put that in. We're a 62% favorite. Um, and we check. We allow him to bluff off his money again. Question is, is our hand strong enough for raise here? I don't think it is because I think if we raise, he's only going to continue with hands that beat us. Um, but I think, I mean, we just allowed it to check call all the way down. Um, we take this line and we allow him to spew off his chips. And let's take a look at what he had. Let's see if it shows it. There you go. Six, four of hearts. And so we end up taking down a pretty big pot here. Um, $26 pot just by exploitably entirely tweaking our normal strategy against a normal opponent. Um, somebody that's loose passive, that's not fully in three bets. Um, if they're not going to be hyper aggressive post flop, then we can go for um, value C bets post flop. But when we see somebody that is just, you know, for us, a, a drooler, we're like, yes, let, we want to play so many pots against this opponent because we're going to rake a lot of money in against him. Um, we can take these fully exploitative lines that are outside the normal, what we normally do. Um, against a loose passive opponent, I would never check call that many streets in a three bet pot with a pair of queens um when the flush gets there um a straight gets there on the river um we lose to a pair of aces we lose to two pairs we lose to um a lot of set mining hands as well but against somebody like him even if he shoved the river i was gonna snap call because i know that he was full of shit from what i'd seen earlier in the session um and so this is not a stereotypical type of opponent where you're going to face them on a regular basis at the tables. But when you do get an opponent like this, you can look to adjust your normal lines and look to extract some money from them. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and you'll notice um, at the end of this pot, he's down to seven bucks. I am close to doubling up versus sim. So thank you, sir. I appreciate your money. Please come back to the tables again. If you guys like this video, please click the thumbs up button. If you have any questions about my lines I took, definitely let me know. Um, and if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, definitely subscribe. Expect more videos in the future. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm just starting a 20K hand challenge. I'm going to Vegas in a month, and I'm looking to log 20,000 hands on Ignition in the next month in the evening in my spare time. Um, hopefully, I'll get there because I plan on producing hopefully one course this month. I'm taking on three new coaching students as well. Um, and so I work full time as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how I can mix everything in and also produce YouTube videos as well. So again, I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. Hopefully you found this informative and entertaining. Um, it just goes to show you poker's not dead, especially not on Ignition. While there's a lot of good poker players on Ignition now, especially because of Upswing, I'm an Upswing Lab member myself. I see a lot of fellow Ignition players on there. People learning to play more balance, learning to play a lot better post-flop, but there's still a lot more fish on Ignition. So definitely, um, quick shout out to, to Upswing Poker. Um, I do recommend it, but there's a caveat and you're going to have to wait for another video because I'm going to talk about um, Upswing Poker when I do a review for them. Um, probably, I don't know, in a couple weeks to a month when I've went through all the content. But anyways, Alton from Mike Rounder Poker School signing off. I'll see you guys later. Uh, catch you guys at the next video.